An open letter to Informa. Dear sir or ma'am, or to whomever it may concern, I have been led to believe that a company owned by Informa will be launching a lawsuit for defamation against my friend and associate, Alison Tiemann. The allegations of defamation are so outrageous that I find it difficult to believe a corporation with a good public image like Informa would initiate, authorize, or even allow one of its subsidiaries to threaten such an action. As such, I am writing to ask for clarification of Informa's official position on launching said defamation suit against Ms. Tiemann. First, I will give you some background. A lawsuit alleging breach of contract and injurious falsehood was initiated by Ms. Tiemann against Calgary Expo in the fall of 2015 regarding an eviction that occurred at the 2015 Calgary Expo. Ms. Tiemann is an independent comic creator who attended Calgary Expo's 2015 convention. During the event, Calgary Expo expelled Ms. Tiemann without investigation based on false allegations. This action constituted a violation of Calgary Expo's own written codes and policies and a breach of contract on the part of Calgary Expo. Following the eviction, Calgary Expo publicly distributed defamatory false allegations made by its business partner, the Mary Sue, against Allison Tiemann. The sequence of events is as follows. False and defamatory statements about Ms. Tiemann were publicly made by other parties, some of them closely associated with co-defendant the Mary Sue, statements which Calgary Expo's head of operations, Shane Henkelman, then acted on without further investigation. His decision to act on these false statements resulted in Ms. Tiemann's eviction as an exhibitor and a 10-year ban from all conventions then operated by Calgary Comic and Entertainment Expo, Inc. Mr. Henkelman permitted Ms. Tiemann and her colleagues so little time approximately 20 minutes, to remove their belongings and leave the premises that substantial damage was done to Ms. Tiemann's expensive booth installation. This damage alone is in excess of $4,000. The false and defamatory allegations were, within an hour and a half of Ms. Tiemann's eviction, repeated and expanded on in an article published by co-defendant and Calgary Expo Cosplay Contest partner, the Mary Sue, an article which remains public and uncorrected as of this date. This article was then cited by Calgary Expo on its official Twitter social media account as a public explanation as to why Ms. Tiemann had been evicted and banned. In addition to citing the article as the reason for the eviction, Calgary Expo reiterated to individuals questioning the article's account of events that the Mary Sue's reporting was accurate. This action by Calgary Expo served to substantiate the false allegations made in the article. Within approximately an hour of the Calgary Expo's initial tweet, citing the Mary Sue's article, being published, Mr. Henkelman ordered Calgary Expo's social media director to delete the tweet. He did so because he understood that Calgary Expo citing the Mary Sue's article in this way was legally actionable and would expose Calgary Expo to potential litigation. He said exactly this to Ms. Tiemann during a break in the trial proceedings where I was present. The additional tweet in which the Calgary Expo asserts that the Mary Sue's reporting was accurate remains publicly available to this date. Later that same day, after much pressure from individuals on social media and Expo attendees, Calgary Expo tweeted a vague public statement on the matter that did nothing whatsoever to refute or correct any of the false allegations in the Mary Sue's article. At this time, Mr. Henkelman had evidence, both in his immediate possession and readily publicly available to him, that all of said allegations were false. Calgary Expo has maintained radio silence on the matter ever since, adding further credibility to the allegations in the eyes of the public. Despite the Mary Sue having reached out to Calgary Expo prior to publishing their article with a request for comment, no direct comment to the Mary Sue from Calgary Expo as to the reason Ms. Tiemann was evicted appears in that article. All that appears in way of explanation appended as an update is the general public statement published by the Calgary Expo that in no way corrects the record. 
Soon after the eviction, Ms. Tiemann sent a letter by registered mail to Calgary Expo requesting they correct the public record or she would be forced to consider legal action. No reply from Calgary Expo was forthcoming. Had Calgary Expo merely performed a retroactive investigation into the allegations and made a public statement clearing Ms. Tiemann's name, had they done the bare minimum required of them contractually, no lawsuit would have ensued. The inaction of Calgary Expo in this matter is particularly egregious, since it had in its direct possession and available to it at the time evidence that not only were the allegations reported by the Mary Sue and repeated by other media outlets entirely false, but that Calgary Expo had indeed wrongfully evicted Ms. Tiemann in breach of its contract with her. Mr. Henkelman, for his part as head of operations, conducted no investigation whatsoever regarding the allegations against Ms. Tiemann prior to evicting her. Allegations he would have discovered were wholly false had he done so. I know this because he told Ms. Tiemann in my presence that had he taken the time to give even a cursory glance at her evidence, he would not have evicted her. Through its direct actions and its subsequent and continued inaction, Calgary Expo and its head of operations, Shane Henkelman, substantively contributed to the destruction of the professional reputation of a female comic book artist who had devoted seven years of her life to creating an original graphic novel series. Calgary Expo's actions and inactions have caused Ms. Tiemann's sales, marketability, and professional and networking opportunities. As an example of the latter, at the previous expo she had attended in Saskatoon, Ms. Tiemann was offered a job teaching at an art school in British Columbia. Being banned for 10 years from such events means no similar opportunities will be made available to her. And in addition, your employee, Shane Henkelman, informed Ms. Tiemann in my presence that her 10-year ban would and will be upheld at all Informa exhibitions across North America if she does not settle in a satisfactory manner with Calgary Expo. Being banned over public allegations that she harassed people, lied on her contract, and then further breached that contract, allegations your employee and representative has allowed to stand as fact for almost three years despite having evidence from the beginning that they were entirely false, would certainly impact anyone's willingness to do business with Ms. Tiemann, even outside of Calgary Expo. In evicting Ms. Tiemann without conducting an investigation, Calgary Expo breached its contract with her. In evicting her in the manner it did, Calgary Expo caused her more than $4,000 in direct damage just to her equipment and merchandise. In banning her for 10 years with no cause whatsoever, it has impeded her ability to conduct business. In citing the Mary Sue's article as the reason Ms. Tiemann was evicted and further tweeting that the Mary Sue's reporting was accurate, Calgary Expo publicly disseminated and substantiated false and defamatory statements about Ms. Tiemann. This has, of course, negatively impacted Ms. Tiemann's ability to conduct business. And to add insult to injury, Calgary Expo reported Ms. Tiemann and her associates to police two days after the eviction. Ms. Tiemann's crime? Having a picnic in a park with fans a full kilometer from the Expo site. Two police vans and four officers attended the scene to inquire as to our intentions. Our intentions being having a picnic in a public park, eating from cold cut and vegetable platters and taking group photos with our fans. The police officer seemed to have a difficult time explaining to Calgary Expo and its agents that citizens simply can't be arrested for having a picnic in a public park while holding a different political opinion. The trial proper began on November 28th of last year. Ms. Tiemann gave direct testimony for the majority of the first two days. The morning of the third day, both defendants expressed interest in talking about a settlement, despite Ms. Tiemann's direct testimony not even being concluded. If and when this case goes back to trial, Calgary Expo, and the Mary Sue for that matter, will lose. 
I predict they will lose on the strength of Ms. Teeman's evidence alone. But they will also lose because they are unable to call Mr. Henkelman, their only first-hand eyewitness to events, to the stand, as doing so will either suborn or reveal perjury on his part. Which is why I believe a week or two before the trial commenced he was quietly dropped from the defense's witness list. Put plainly, the defendants have no defense. They have no case. Even if they had one, they couldn't bring that defense because their only viable witness has already perjured himself in a sworn affidavit. Shane Henkelman is the person who made the decision to evict Ms. Teeman, and he will not be testifying. The judge is allowed by law to speculate as to why this is the case and to draw whatever inference from that that he chooses. While I cannot publicly disclose the settlement terms that were discussed, Ms. Teeman was extremely generous in not only allowing Calgary Expo an opportunity to publicly correct their error and at the same time save face, but was, in my opinion, overly conciliatory on the issue of financial compensation. She has bent over backwards to come to an agreement that would paint all parties in a decent light while simultaneously compensating her for the financial toll the defendant's actions have taken on her. Ms. Tiemann has done everything in her power to negotiate in good faith. Yet apparently, as part of their own negotiations, the Calgary Expo's counsel has threatened Ms. Tiemann with a slap defamation lawsuit over a two-word tweet made by her friend and collaborator Brian Martinez via his personal Twitter account, a tweet made without Ms. Tiemann's knowledge or authorization, Mr. Martinez, upon hearing that the defendants were willing to discuss a settlement, tweeted, We won. This tweet in no way constitutes defamation against either defendant, and there are multiple affirmative defenses that could successfully be brought in a court of law. Unlike Mr. Henkelman, however, when Mr. Martinez discovered people were misconstruing his tweet, he immediately and publicly corrected the record with a clarification that no, we did not win the lawsuit, but we had scored a win by inducing the defendants to discuss a settlement. He then deleted the problematic tweet and then continued to correct the record whenever he discovered someone somewhere had gotten the wrong idea. For this innocuous tweet that was in no way defamatory, and even so was immediately clarified and corrected in the interest of accuracy, your counsel is threatening a defamation litigation against a man who was undergoing chemotherapy at the time he made the tweet and who has since had surgery resulting in nerve damage such that he may never walk normally again. And that's going to look great for Informa, isn't it? It'll look especially good next to Mr. Henkelman and Calgary Expo's own public dissemination of def defamation against Ms. Teeman, which he and you have allowed to stand uncorrected for almost three years. I am aware that most of this occurred before Informa acquired Calgary Expo. Neither I nor Ms. Teeman hold Informa in any way morally responsible for actions committed by others long before Informa was even associated with Calgary Expo or Shane Henkelman. However, at this point, Mr. Henkelman is employed by you. Calgary Expo is an asset you now own. As such, Elmer Chu is now your counsel. He's on your payroll. You are paying his legal fees. Informa is, I can only assume, now responsible for Calgary Expo, Shane Henkelman, Elmer Chu, and any actions they take or fail to take from the date Informa acquired Calgary Expo. I can only assume that this includes how this particular matter re is resolved. At this point in time, unless you inform us otherwise, we will have to assume that this threat of a slap defamation lawsuit was authorized by Informa. 
It was made by agents on your payroll, after all. Ms. Tiemann, myself, and our associates, many of whom have a massive reach online, will do everything we can to publicize this new recalcitrance and obstructionism on the part of an entity you now own and control and whose actions we can only assume that you sanction. If we are wrong, please tell us otherwise. Since 2015, Calgary Expo has suffered a decline in attendance of nearly 10%. While I have no hard data proving that this decline is a result of this ongoing legal issue, I have plenty of anecdotal evidence that many regular attendees were so disgusted by how Ms. Tiemann was treated and continues to be treated by Calgary Expo that they are not planning to attend future expos. Ms. Tiemann's company, Honey Badger Brigade, has maintained public silence over most of the developments since the trial proper began. Due to the overconfidence and incompetence of Calgary Expo's legal counsel, I was present in the courtroom the entire time, and I plan to publicize every single thing I saw. None of it will make Informa's property, Calgary Expo, look particularly good. I am at this point prepared to hold Informa morally immune from responsibility for this debacle should I learn that Shane Henkelman and Elmer Chu are acting without your direct and fully informed authorization. If you fail to inform me as to the accuracy of this assumption while allowing them to continue to behave in this manner, including holding the threat of a frivolous defamation lawsuit over the head of my friend, that will change. You have it in you to distance yourself from the actions of the people in your employ. If Shane Henkelman or Elmer Chu have acted on their own autonomy without your direct and informed authorization, they apparently believe they can initiate potentially disastrous legal actions on Informa's behalf, and they believe they can win by attrition. Delay and obstruct and delay some more and threaten a frivolous lawsuit on your behalf and in your name, Informa, until Ms. Tiemann is completely exhausted of will and resources. I am writing to you to assure that that is not going to happen. Ms. Tiemann will not stop until she gets what she reasonably feels is justice. She will not run out of resources as she has the full financial backing of her community, which includes many people from Informa's future customer base. Calgary Expo, under the leadership of Shang Hinkleman, committed a wrongful and legally actionable act against an independent comment creator, a wrong that has cost her thousands of dollars and her professional reputation. His refusal to correct the public record has only exacerbated the damage caused by his own wrongful actions. He testified to falsehoods on a sworn affidavit and is unable to be called to the stand by his own counsel because of this. It is my belief that Mr. Henkelman is prioritizing his own reputation and his continued employment above what I must assume would be the broader interests of Informa, that is, to bring an end to this matter with as little damage to all parties as possible. I am aware that within large corporations, often the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. I am here to tell you what your left hand is currently doing and to inform you of the ways his behavior and decisions may ultimately damage your reputation. Allow me to reiterate, Calgary Expo will lose on at least one cause of action and will almost certainly lose on both. A decision by a judge, even one that does not hold them fully responsible, will itemize and detail every single, single wrongful act committed by Calgary Expo and all of the legal responsibilities and contractual obligations they neglected relating to the events material to this case. However this trial ends, Calgary Expo will be exposed as having acted against its own policies and guidelines in order to wrongfully expel and ban a female comic creator. It will be exposed as having allowed a false media narrative 
it helped create that has besmirched Ms. Tiemann's business reputation to stand uncorrected for three years. Mr. Henkelman, in settlement negotiations, has indicated that he needs approval from higher-ups before making any offer or concession. As far as I know, he's the head guy in charge of events across Western Canada, so I can only assume the higher-ups he was refer referring to are you, Informa. Mr. Henkelman, during one of the breaks at trial, informed us that since Informa took over, all of the policies and codes at Calgary Expo, particularly regarding politicized speech and expression and investigative procedures into alleged harassment, they've all changed, in part because of what happened to Ms. Tiemann, with the intent that such a thing never happen again. I commend Informa for doing this. If Informa is willing to drastically change policy such that no one will ever find themselves in Ms. Tiemann's position, certainly Informa is implicitly admitting that Ms. Tiemann was egregiously wronged. If she was wronged, then surely she is deserving of amelioration and compensation, including a public correction of the record and maybe even an apology from the individuals responsible. Ms. Tiemann's reputation can be repaired if Calgary Expo, even three years later, is convinced to uphold its contractual obligation to thoroughly investigate this incident and make public its findings. If Calgary Expo refuses, Informa's reputation can and will be damaged simply by your appearing to endorse and authorize the ongoing egregious and recalcitrant actions of people in your employ. I will do everything in my power to make your inaction public, and unlike the co-defendants in this lawsuit, I won't have to utter a single false or legally actionable word to do it. You have the power to end this injustice in Forma, an injustice you had no hand in orchestrating, but which you now preside over as the owner of Calgary Expo. You will either choose to do so, which will be to your credit, or you won't. Best regards, Karen Strawn. Hello, my name is Allison Tiemann, and Karen has graciously allowed me to append this video appeal to the end of her open letter to Informa. I am the plaintiff in the court that she uh, the court case that she described. I was the one who stood up during a feminist panel called Women into Comics and questioned the feminist narrative and then the feminists involved in the, the management of the Calgary Expo decided to get me evicted. I am a small business owner, a female independent comics creator, and they decided to remove me from the event and prevent me from ever coming back, well, at least not coming back for 10 years. Well, now ever, because they changed their policies so that any group that disagrees with the party line, whether or not you're Christian or atheist, aren't allowed back. But regardless, they got me evicted because I disagreed with them, with the belief, with their belief that that particular, it's not believable, that community, that community isn't hateful towards women. I said, I, I don't agree with that, and they kicked me out. Essentially, these women want to come into, and, and this ideology wants to come into these events, these spaces, and kick out not just the men that they disagree with, but most particularly the women who say, wait, 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 I'm not a victim of this culture I helped build, and I don't like you coming in and saying and demonizing it. Anyway, this is a case that I believe has significant importance to freedom of expression, to people who want to have small businesses and have protection from the contracts that they sign with larger business entities who don't want to be lied about by the media because the Mary Sue flat out lied about me as a way to cover this entire situation up. And so it has, it has implications for consumer protection for small business. It has implications for protection from 
media malfeasance. But unfortunately, if I don't get the resources that I need to continue the fight, then I will have to consider entertaining a settlement offer with people who think that a threat of defamation, threatening me with de a defamation lawsuit is a legitimate negotiation tactic for a settlement. So please consider supporting this court case. It's important for not just me, that's why I'm pursuing it to the bitter end. And I'm not looking forward to going back to court, I'm not looking forward to the judgment, but I believe that it's really important that people fight back in these situations. They fight back for freedom of speech, they fight back for rule of law, and people being upheld to the contracts that they create. So if you too feel that that's important, then please go to www.feedthebadger.com. $5, $10, every bit helps. We are about 3000 from our current goal, which is to get just the legal fees to continue the fight. Nothing else, just, just the legal fees. And if you could chip in, that would be greatly appreciated because I do not want to have to settle with these individuals, the individuals who did this in the first place and the individuals who are continuing to just make this so much worse with, with threats. Anyway, um, also if you are around in Calgary or around Calgary, if you're in Western Canada and you're willing to do a road trip, please consider attending the trial because it's going to be, I think it's really important to show that the community supports the outcome of this and that this is important to us. Anyway, so if you want to chip in monetarily, feedthebadger.com. If you want to come, the court case will be July 3rd, 4th, and 5th in the Alberta Civil Court building in Calgary. And um, they usually list where the, where the trial will be held at the court building after you get through security. And if, uh, if you really want to, if you want, if you need any kind of lodging or potentially a ride, please send, or you have a ride or lodging to offer, send a, a message to trial at feed, uh, badgerfeed.com. And, uh, and, uh, and let's get this, let's, let's show the judge that people care about this. Oh, and also the judge, the judge actually, we originally were going to have a trial date in February, but the but our legal counsel, our legal agent, appealed to the judge, and the judge decided to come in on his off days and have the trial seven months earlier than it was originally scheduled. So it would be good to show this judge that the community cares a great deal about the outcome of this trial. So please send it to trial at badgerfeed.com. And, uh, and also go to www.feedthebadger.com and let's make sure we don't have to settle. Because I don't want to settle with these people.